Hey everyone, welcome to this very stressful video where I subject myself to the hypothetical torment of considering what I would do if some horrible tragedy befell my entire fragrance collection and I had to start it all over from scratch. <laughs> I've given myself the normal disclaimers, stipulations, one that these fragrances could change tomorrow, these choices could switcheroo maybe even two hours from now, and I don't want to choose anything that's discontinued because if the hypothetical situation is that I find myself stranded in an unfamiliar city for an indeterminate period of time, I want to be able to either purchase these at a boutique or a store or they are readily orderable online. So nothing discontinued and nothing limited edition. Oh, and that I wanted to have all of my favorite categories covered. So there's a musk and a white floral, a guilty pleasure. But yeah, I think that's the setup. Let's jump in. These are also really in no particular order, but I'm going to start with the scent that would be my workhorse, my easy reach daily, everyday scent. And I've also picked it for sentimental reasons, and that is Allure from Chanel. This is the Eau de Parfum. I've been through so many bottles of this EDT formulation as well. One of their flankers called the Eau Fraiche Sainte was like a body and hair mist kind of thing. This was one of the first high-end luxury fragrances that I purchased for myself. It was my signature for a couple of years in college. I just have such good scent memories tied with this. As a youngster, it felt so elegant, grown up, sophisticated, and it's still one of my favorites. I'm not gonna go through notes and stuff in this video, I think, otherwise we would just be here forever. If you're watching this, you're probably not that interested in the notes and you can look them up because there's very good to go. So I'm just gonna go through it and... So that is Allure, my everyday, easy reach, daytime, elegance, workhorse fragrance. The next category we have is musk, one of my favorite notes in perfumery. And I also really enjoy musks in an oil form. And my favorite, favorite one, I'm almost embarrassed to show you this bottle because it's kind of beat up and crazy. <laughs> It's Bruno Acampora. I don't know if that's really how you say it. You're gonna hear me say those words a lot. Bruno Acampora musk, the label's all rubbed off. It's been loved. This is hands down my favorite musk oil. It's so intoxicating and the way that it changes on your skin when you put it on and it warms throughout the day Oh my god, it creates this amazing cloud. It just creates this whole ambiance around you It's so warm sensual earthy and the more you wear it the more the sillage grows You just need the tiniest amount. I've had this bottle forever I don't know. Maybe my nose picks up musk a lot. This is very potent to me I love to layer this with harsh or ouds or anything that I feel needs a little bit of an earthier kick. Any of the more metallic, modern style, molecular fragrances, I love to layer this under. It's just so good. It's pretty pricey for this little guy, but as I said, I find it lasts a really long time, so well worth it. It comes in a spray too, but I prefer the oil. I just, I like the oil forms. So that is Bruno Acampora Musk. I'll pop a better picture of it somewhere in here because... You can't see sh The next category for me is woody lactonic fragrances. Also kind of a daytime scent. This one's appropriate for warmer weather. I think this is a good summertime sandalwood woody scent. And that is Lumiere Blanche from Olfactive Studio. Gosh, this is one of my absolute favorites. The longevity on this is like, Nothing, but it's worth it to me. Milky, very ethereal. I was gonna say fluffy, but I don't think it's fluffy. I think it's more fog-like, cooling. A milky sandalwood. This one, weirdly, is probably my biggest compliment getter. I wouldn't expect it from something that's so translucent, but there's something about this that's very innocently sensual. Yeah, this one's really definitely a fave. Lumiere Blanche from Olfactive Studio. My next category is a pure patchouli. I am a patchouli ho. While a lot of times I use a patchouli oil or like an oil I blend myself that's heavily in patchouli, one of my very favorite commercially available patchoulis is Histoire de Parfum Noir Patchouli. 
this is a beautiful aromatic kind of green leaning patchouli it's a clean smelling fresh almost sparkling kind of patchouli this is another one i like to layer with that bruno acampora musk i think i mentioned this in my whole collection video was my husband and i's wedding scent his wedding party brought it to him and he sprayed it on and then my wedding party brought it to me and i sprayed it on it was nice we wanted to have the same scent cloud in union it's a little bit spicy it's a little bit musky there's a bit of a cardamom note at the top which i love i'm a sucker for a cardamom note so it has that tinge of spicy interest yeah i really really love this one noir patchouli from histoire de parfum while we are on the subject of patchouli, I knew I wanted to have a rose patchouli in this hypothetical starter collection. This one was difficult for me to narrow down. I hemmed and hawed on this one a lot, but in the end, I chose Tom Ford Noir de Noir. I only have a decant of it here. I don't know why I'm showing you this. It's just a decant. <laughs> This is a beautiful rose patchouli with that really interesting truffle note. This isn't everyone's cup of tea, but it works with my skin chemistry well. So when it dries down, it's really a nice, musky, dark, seductive, mysterious rose. This is also a massive compliment getter for me. It was my signature for a while, and then someone I was very close to took it for his signature, and I had to stop wearing it. I mean, I had to. You can't be walking around in a close circle of friends and both smelling the same. Like, I was shocked. I was appalled that he had purchased the fragrance. I was like, how could you do that? So anyway, <laughs> I let that one go and then I couldn't live without it. So now I just have this decant, but I also have the oil version of it, which I like to layer it underneath, give it a little bit more longevity. And this is a pretty good, I would say it's 80% similar pretty good too. And in my other collection, I also have Club de Nuit Intense, which is also a very nice dupe. I know we're all over the map about clone houses, dupe houses, inspired by fragrances. My two cents is that there have always been fragrances that have hopped on a trend or took an idea and bettered the idea. There are tons of moralistic, artistic reasons to be anti-clone and dupe house, but I also think to make these pieces of art, which they are, accessible to a wider audience can't be a terrible thing. People want to smell good. People want to have that little bit of joy in their life. Not everyone has $500 to spend on a bottle of perfume, which let's be honest, we don't need. I never said that. We need it. I just think that making these sensory experiences available to a wider audience is a good thing in general. The nitty gritty that's another subject, but in general, availability, accessibility, I'm for it. Anyway, Noir de Noir, that's my choice for a rose patchouli. The next category I knew I needed to have is a tropical floral, and I chose Serge Luton's Detura Noir. This is also something of a sentimental choice because it was my first niche fragrance purchase ever. I purchased this in, I think, 2006 or seven, as exhibited by this cap that's completely falling apart. It's just a beautiful, creamy, almost pink smelling, quasi sunscreeny. It's more floral than sunscreeny. I won't say it's totally sunscreeny, but it definitely gives a nighttime, summer, tropical floral vibe. I remember this blowing my mind when I first got it. I'm extremely shy as a person, and I just remember being so nervous going to the Serge Luton's counter. The sales assistant asked me what I liked, and I said, a creamy white floral, and she brought this out, and it was love at first sniff. I purchased it then and there. So my choice for a tropical floral, but also for a summertime evening fragrance, Detour Noir. While we're on florals, I mean, that was also, I guess, a white floral, but I wanted a more concentrated white floral. Specifically, I wanted something that reminded me of Marc Jacobs, Marc Jacobs, the original one, the Gardenia tuberose one. I love gardenias as a note, but that one's discontinued, so I couldn't put it on this list. I went with Amouage Love Tuberose. This is my little scent bird decants of Love to Bros. It's definitely not the same. This one's much sweeter. It has a whipped cream note that makes it more gourmand, but it has that overall vibe of a gardenia leaning fragrance. You know, now that I'm smelling it, I don't think I want this on my list. I think I want Narciso White Cube. This is a little bit sweet for me as I'm sniffing it today, right now. I'm gonna actually go with Narciso 
white cube. That has a more voluptuous gardenia. The vetiver in it anchors it in such a way that it's a little bit unisex leaning, more versatile than Love Tuberose. So, last minute switcheroo, Narciso white cube, my gardenia white floral. Okay, we're down to the last three. Let's talk about my guilty pleasure choice. This is a fragrance I absolutely adore. One of the only very few fragrances that I have backups of. I'm always hunting down vintage pre-reformulations of this. It is such a special, ineffable, indescribable place in my heart. And that is Angel by Thierry Mugler, and this is pre-reformulation bottle. What more can be said about this that hasn't already been said? I won't go into any of that. I will say I put on the current L'Oreal version of this thing. <laughs> the other night, my husband smelled it, and he has come around to the vintage versions. He still thinks it smells like an armpit, and he says funky, but... But he's come around to the vintage versions. I put on the L'Oreal reformulation, and he straight up was like, you smell like... <laughs> stressed out... <laughs> in your Levi's... <laughs> in your pants. Needless to say, I'm not a fan of the current reformulation either. But these vintage guys are just incredible. It's a guilty pleasure scent because I do not have the balls to wear this in public yet. <laughs> I do not have the balls to potentially nasally harass people in my proximity. I'm scared to. But this is one that I wear constantly at home. Anytime I feel like I need comfort, nostalgia, reminiscing about my youthful days. It was such a ubiquitous scent on the people around me during this era. So I have beautiful scent memories attached to this. I will never wear it out. So that is my guilty pleasure, but I would need to have it in my collection because I do wear this so often at home. Angel. Second to last, again, these are no particular order. I don't know why I said that. Um, I know that I would want a violet fragrance. Violet's one of my very favorite notes. I chose Insolence from Guerlain. This would be a beautiful, cool weather scent, crisp fall morning kind of scent. Hello. Clean, cold violets. Just crisp. This is like a white, starched blouse kind of scent. This is a put together. <sighs> My camera stopped. I don't know where I was. Getting your business done kind of scent. It makes me feel competent. I understand why it's called insolence, but at the same time, I don't because this feels quite on the straight and narrow. Competence, power, feminine, cold. Okay, maybe I do understand why it's called insolence. To me, the quintessential violet scent, Insolence by Guerlain. Last, but most certainly not least, I knew I needed to have a classic Chypre. While I waffled, I waffled a little, I knew there could really be no other but Mitsuko. And I think if I had to choose one scent for my entire life, I think it would be Mitsuko. I struggle to find any kind of words to describe this or how it makes me feel. It does something crazy in my brain. It just reroutes every neuron, every synapse. It fires everything all at once. It time travels me to a past life, to a hypothetical parallel life. It's like a memory from a parallel life that's occurring simultaneously, but at a different point in time. This is the Eau de Toilette. I have the Eau de Parfum in my other collection. If I had to pick, I think I would pick the Eau de Parfum over the Toilette. This one's a little bit more sparkling and brighter. And what I like about the Eau de Parfum is that it's much deeper and richer, just a little bit more, more in general. What a singular creation. Spicy and borderline edible, like an interesting spice cake that's been sitting in the back of a cupboard, but for some reason you still want to eat it. Mitsuko.
Okay guys, whew, that was a little painful. See, I already changed my mind in the middle of it. This list is gonna change probably in an hour. We'll have to do an update again when I feel like I want to torment myself a little bit in this way. Thank you guys for sticking around and spending some time with me today. I hope you enjoyed this list. Let me know what would be your top 10 if you had to start your collection over again. Let me know if some of these made it onto your list. Oh, also I started an Instagram account. I decided to hop on that bandwagon. So if you guys want to hang out with me over there, it is underscore Ruby Zion underscore. We will chat more about perfumes over there. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.